When you type in weather balloon on google.com, one of the first search suggestions that pop up is, are weather balloons still used? This shows just how little people know about weather balloons. Some of you may not even know what they are. Well, here's a little fun fact. Up to 1,800 weather balloons are released into the air every day, up to four times daily, and 92 of those are launched in the US. Isn't that cool? Well, that may not be cool to you yet. Once I explain the history of these incredibly cool contraptions and how they work, I'm sure that'll change your mind. The 18th and 19th centuries. Concepts similar to the modern day weather balloon can be dated all the way back to 1749 in Europe, where scientists would attach a thermometer to a kite and fly it up high in the sky to record temperatures. In the early 1780s, scientists would take this exploration of the sky a step further and use the recently invented hot air balloons to investigate the upper atmosphere and document its structure and chemistry. Along with them, they took thermometers, barometers, and more. Atmospheric exploration with kites would continue though, one of the reasons being just how dangerous exploring extremely high altitudes in a hot air balloon really was. A couple of years later, near the end of the 1800s, kite observation stations had finally been established by the United States Weather Bureau. Like the scientists in the hot air balloons, these kites would carry meteorographs to document the temperature, humidity, and pressure. The 1900s Fast forward a bit to the early 1900s, and now we can send meteorographs into the air on unmanned balloons. And what's even better, they can reach much higher altitudes compared to manned balloons. How these balloons worked was similar to how weather balloons work today. The balloons would burst, and then the meteorograph would fall back to the ground. The meteorograph would then store the data that it had collected until found. There was one major issue with these balloon meteorographs, though. The data couldn't be collected immediately, making it unreliable for weather forecasting, and if the meteorograph couldn't be found, there would be no way to receive the data. One solution to this was keeping the balloon on a tether, but this limited how high the balloon could go. The rest of this video couldn't be animated because of, uh, budget cuts. Let's just stick with that. Wait, you may be asking. What happened to the kites? I thought you said people were still using them. Well, curious one. Let me answer your question with another question. What other landmark flight-related invention was made during the 1900s? That's right, planes. Due to planes now being able to carry meteorographs, the use of kites for atmospheric observations was a thing of the past by the year 1933. From the years 1925 to 1943, the Weather Bureau of an Army Air Corps made, an, made and operated 30 aircraft stations that were located across the U.S. Unfortunately, planes couldn't fly in poor weather conditions so they could only reach a max altitude of 5 kilometers. While the data the planes provided was good, it just wasn't good enough. In response to this, the WBAAC started to track small balloons with an optical theodolite to obtain near real-time information about the winds. At night, a small light would be attached to the balloons to help with the tracking. The 1930s to the 1950s. You must be pretty tired about hearing about all the obstacles and restrictions that these scientists have to face. Well guess what, they were pretty tired too. The inability to reach high altitudes, transmit real-time data, and operate in all times of weather encouraged these scientists and innovators to develop radio transmission for the upper air data. Scientists would stick these radio transmissions into balloons, and by the 1930s, the first radio meteograph, or radio sounds, were now all the way up in the stratosphere. And in 37, the WBAAC created stations for these new radio sounds, some still active today. Development was quickened again a few years later due to World War II, with radio theolidites now allowing radio sounds to be trackable. These radio theolidites at first had to be set by hand, but by 1950, automatic radio theolidites were made. The 1960s through the 1980s. Later in the 1960s, the development of computers, more specifically PCs, helped with the documentation of data collected by the radio sounds, and by the mid 1980s, the whole process of receiving, processing, and distributing data became nearly fully automated, requiring almost no human work. The collection of atmospheric data went from being a three-man job to just a solo task. That was a pretty big jump. Isn't it kind of funny how the most innovative inventions are always the most simple? Anyways, the 1990s and the early 2000s. In the 1990s, there were a few upgrades to the Renaissance sensors and data processors, but there was one advancement that stole the show, the global positioning systems, or more commonly known as GPS. GPS allowed for the position of the radio sound to be easily known and tracked. By the late 1990s, the NWS began to replace the automated radio theolidites with GPS-based systems. That's pretty much the entire history of weather balloons. So now we can finally talk about how these things work. Well, the 1960s through early 2000s section pretty much gives you a rough idea of how weather balloons work today. But I'm going to go in depth just for you, because you're special. Due to their stretchy properties, the actual balloon part of the weather balloon is made out of latex or synthetic rubber. The balloon at the beginning of the journey typically starts with a width of about 6 feet, but they can expand up to 20 feet wide. The main component of the weather balloon, the radiosonde, is attached to the balloon. 
The radio sun can collect data like temperature, air pressure, and humidity. And with the help of the GPS, it can also collect data about the wind direction and speed. A transmitter can also be found on the radio sound. It transmits all of this data back to the ground in real time. The weather balloon can travel for up to 2 hours reaching heights of up to 115,000 feet before it finally bursts. As the radio sawn falls back to the ground, a small parachute slows its descent to prevent danger to life and property. This also makes them reusable. Now you know everything about Wallet with the Balloons. Thank you for listening. Bye!